Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel T and Art. I hope you all are well. So let's start today's video. Today's project is going to be a little different and it's really fun and cute and I told you that there will be crazy ideas coming your way. So first of all, I'm going to use this mold. I had this mold for some time and I haven't used it a lot. So this mold is from Art Blog. I will link their company in my description. So uh, I have mixed my resin. I have taken one to one uh, let's resin here and I just mixed it and now I'm pouring it into the mold. So this is going to be done in two layers. So the reason I had showed you craft, uh, casting craft is that it is the white pigment that is best for making flowers. And whenever I make flowers, I use this pigment. It's amazing. So in a container, I am taking, uh, this is the container and I'm taking around 20 ml of resin. And to this, I will be roughly adding around, you can say, 6 to 7 drops of casting craft. So the layer that I have poured for making the flower is around, you can see, a bit medium, not too much resin. So after pouring my resin, I will be using this casting craft and I, as I told you, 6 to 7 drops of this is enough for 20 ml of resin. First of all, make sure that you shake your bottle nicely so that all the pigment is mixed. So after putting my pigment, I'm going to mix it. So I was just thinking in my mind for a color scheme that I want to go with an idea that I'm going to show you because I'm super excited about sharing that idea. It is really fun and it's all about bringing out your inner uh, child. Before that, uh, I am going to add this purplish tone uh, it's an uh, interference mica and it is by Lightwish. I really love these pigments and I do use them a lot. I will link them in my description. They have a lot of possibilities to work with. They are so pretty. So I can see that in Easter projects, I will be using these colors a lot. So I'm just going to add a little bit of these this into the white pigment, although I know that it's not showing too much, but still it is. it has a hint of that purple in it. And after mixing my pigment, I'm just making sure that the pigment is nicely uh, mixed into the resin. Reason being is that when you make a flower and the pigment is not mixed, your petals are cracked. It, you get a sort of wavy effect. So there are a lot of things that happen. So make sure your pigment is mixed into the resin. And now uh, this is just a simple jiffy bag and I'm just pouring the resin into the bag here. And I always told you that you need to have a honey-like consistency for your uh, resin to make a flower. So make sure that you have that. Or otherwise you can use a, a gun to uh, notice the temperature that I do uh, you, uh, also use. And I ha have some bubbles on the top of the top layer. So I'm using this heat gun just to remove the bubbles. So a lot of time I do ask for this heat gun. It is by Dremel. It's their soldering um, heat gun. So I do use it for my soft soldering jewelry projects also. And it is useful in my art projects also. And here for the center of the flower, I have some gold leaves, some pink nuggets and some uh, golden nuggets. And I just mix them in a little bit of resin. And I'm going to just add them into the center of the flower here. And here you go. It's going into the center of the flower. And now with the help of a gun, I'm just going to check the temperature of the resin. And I told you that anything above 36 is ready to uh, pour for making flour. And now I'm going to cut the end of this jiff jiffy bag. And this is really up to you if you want a very thin petal or a thick petal. I'm just making a sort of on the medium side. So I'm just checking the consistency of the white if it's flowing. So it is perfect and now it's time to do the flower petal here. So I'm just going freely and sweetly just making petals here. You can see how I'm doing that. So it really depends on my mood that how I want to make my petals. There are so many ways to make the resin petals. So today I selected to do this one. So you can see that I'm making just simple lines, just swiggly lines. 
I'm just so amazed by this resin technique that how this resin just spreads up and creates such a beautiful flower pattern. Whoever came up with this idea of making a flower is a huge genius in my eyes. And then also all of the artists who are coming up with new and amazing techniques. It's really a hard job of thinking and creating new techniques. So hats off to all of you amazing artists out there. So after that, I will be split, splitting them into uh, petals. So I didn't like that tool. It is a bulky tool. I'm using a toothpick here, but just make sure that that toothpick don't touches the base of your mold because it can destroy it. I am on the top of the resin and very lightly just making the petals. And in between, I am uh, take, removing the extra resin that is stick to the toothpick with the tissue paper. And very smoothly you can see that I'm making the petals here. The process is so satisfying on itself. And after that I will leave this layer to cure. So this is the next day and you can see my flower petals have bloomed. And now it's time to do the second layer. And for my second layer I have selected this pink color. And this is again by Art Blocks, the same company that I, the mold is from. So I have mixed my resin here. It's by Let's Resin 1 to 1 and I am adding few drops of this pigment. I just love this pigment so much. It's such, it's such a beautiful shade of pink. So adding few drops and then I will be mixing it and then I will be pouring this as a top layer. And here you can see the pigment. So whenever I'm doing something, there is something I have to do an extra and it's the last time, last minute thing. And at the moment I have this uh, golden mica powder by Perlex and I'm going to add a little bit into the pink. It's really something inside me that don't want to go something really simple. I have to do something extra to my projects here. Speaking of extra and you know this flower coaster is going to be a base for something. So yeah, this is not just a simple flower coaster I'm showing you. There is a step that I have to do and that is the step is special. The reason, reason I'm making this raisin flower. Otherwise I would, wouldn't have made it. So after adding the uh, golden uh, mica, I can see there is a little tinge of color in this pink, pink pinks. But still it's such a pretty background. So here you go and I'm going to pour it. And here is the pink reason. So this is really a fairly big mold so I am not going to the top of top of it but still it's full but not to the corners as you can see. A little bit of heat gun and then I will leave this to cure and I will see you next day. So this is the next day and I am super excited to see how this turns out. Really fingers crossed because this is a flower and this is always such a, you know, time to check how your flower turned out. So this is the mold all neat and clean done. And one, two, and three. This is how the flower looked like and it is so beautiful. It is so delicate and it is perfect for the project. I just love this mold. Amazing and beautiful results. So this is step one of making the flower coaster and now I'm going to the step two. And step two is that you can see some so this creams is the over part there. where the inner childs come in and you can see that these are Jacodan creams and it's been so many years I have seen artists amazing, uh, making these phone cases, these Jacodan phone cases and I was so always so inspired to see them how they create that amazing whip amazing creaming techniques onto the back of the phone cases and arranging beautiful cute objects on the back of them so this is my first time trying it believe me i thought why not combine resin and these and this couldn't together so today ladies and gentlemen i am doing that i'm just showing you the colors that come in the kit i bought this from amazon so there are so many ways to make the decadent cream. One of them was using silicon. I can't use the silicon because it will not stick to the resin and it is going to be removable. So I bought this one. So these are actually have a base of a clay. So they dry hard. So these are the colors. So I have enough to play with and later on making other projects. I am so excited. So I'm going to select the white and the pink color. 
and in between i'm really confused that i might destroy the project because uh, i don't do uh, i'm not an expert in doing icing on the cake i just do a simple icing when i make cake so yeah i'm just afraid about messing up the whip as you can see the tubes are little small so if i messed up i'm going to waste a lot so I see that you can make these at home by using a air dry clay of a specific company and then adding a little bit of I think glue in there so it can turn into the cream but it was too much work for me and I didn't want to do that and so I bought these. So here we go and I'm going to see how the first whip comes out. So I just loved this one it turned out to be really smooth and this is the second one. And this is the third one and I am happy that I have a control of the whip because I think this is a, a good quality one and it holds its shape. So here we go. I have done six of the pink and then I will be doing six of the white because I was thinking of what design to go with. I am doing a bit simple one today because as I told you that it's my first time doing using these whips. And this is the white one and I think I can make these now I am a bit confident. So I will be doing this all around the coaster. You just enjoy the process. So the whip is done now so please don't worry i know a lot of you are thinking that i have ruined this project but i promise you that i didn't so these are the cute charms that i bought and I, now i am going to play with these and i want to see how much or how many i have to add so i've taken out all of the charms from the packages and now i'm going just with the theme and the color combination now this is really up to you whatever design you are going to going with i just wanted to create some fun uh, elements into this uh, resin coaster so I'm adding sweets ice creams so I was so much involved in making this coaster that I didn't notice that it is out of my camera here so I'm really sorry about that you can see that the amount of happiness I had while making this that I forgot that I was filming so I'm going to speed up this process. So I just want to show you that how cute are these miniature lollipops. They are so cute. When I received them, I was I didn't know that the size was going to be so small. But they added such a beauty to the coaster. I love how small they are. And I ordered these small uh, glass balls and these are filled up with some stars inside. So these are glass balls. So they, the quality is amazing. So I wanted to use them also in the project. At the moment, I'm just selecting the colors. So this is how it looks like as I, I was telling you that it is made out of glass and filled with stars. So I was thinking of adding the pink and white, but then it is a bit bulky. So I just thought I'll just go with one. So here I will be using this white one. I'm just selecting the area where I want to put it so since it is a bigger charm I need some more cream so I just uh, added a little bit of pink cream to add the charm here like this so trust me this was such a fun process to add these uh, beautiful little cute charms onto the coaster And after doing the everything off camera, here is the final look. I really, I'm sorry about that, but I was so involved in making the coaster, but it's simply just the objects that I'm attaching to the cream. So this took me a lot of time because it was such a thinking that where I have to add something where. So it was fairly simple that they were perfectly attaching themselves to the whip. And you can see here it's balancing everything out and I am seeing that the coaster is coming out really amazing and beautiful and cute. And the sweet will go here. So now I had to add some more of the accents to the 
coaster here and these are some pearly beautiful iridescent sort of pearls so i will be adding these to the whip all around because they come on in different sizes and with the help of my tweezers i am putting these pearls on different sides and different sizes and with that i will be adding some simple pearls also And after doing that, I will leave this to dry and I will see you next day. This is the next day and this is how the coaster looked like. So when I was going to make this project, everything was really clear in my mind. So this is the step that I was going to do and I have my gilting glue out, I know, but I am going to use it and I will be applying this onto the edges of this coaster very lightly. I don't want it to be fully used. I want, to edge, I want the edges to be shown, but just a hint of gilding glue on the edges of this coaster so you can really finish the project at this point it's really up to you if you think that it's done it's done but for me it's i have still to add a few things few finishing touches you can say so uh, you can see that i'm lightly brushing the edges i'm not get, uh, going heavy with the gilding glue here so i will be doing this all around the coaster So after doing that, it's time to do the top coat. So I have mixed my let's resin again one to one and I am adding it to the center of the uh, coaster here. And with my help of heat gun, I will be spreading the resin all, all the way. And in this way, I will be doing the top so coat. So this resin is not only going to do the top layer, it is also going to secure the whip. So everything is going to be really extra secured and using a little bit of heat gun and after that I will leave this to cure and I will see you next day. So this is the next day and my coaster is done. The layer is, has been complete and now it's time to add the gold foil. And here I am taking the gold foil. So I am using gold foil, foil here instead of the mirror gold that I usually use. And I will be putting this onto the edges here little by little. And after that, I will be brushing off the extra gold foil. So here you can see I'm using my brush and I'm just removing the extra gold foil. So this is the final step and let's see how this coaster looks like. So here we go this is the final look of the coaster and i just love it how it turns out the little bit of golden on the edges it did bring out the elegance of this coaster and the flower and these little cute gummy bears and sweets everything mixed together and created a beautiful decadent inspired resin coaster with a flower technique so it's really up to you whatever you want to make your center with you can add sweets into the center you can use glitter you can use dry flowers it's really up to you i just went with this i wanted to do the flower technique also and then i wanted to add it these small charms and this whip all in all this is inspired by the decadent phone cases that every uh, i have seen over the years has been made so much and so I really enjoyed watching those video where they put the charms onto the decadent with using the whip. So it was something I enjoyed. So today, after so many years, I thought, why not combine these two and make a resin coaster? And I am so happy it turned out to be so pretty. Today is such a happy day. And because of this coaster, I feel so happy. I think you feel the same. And if you do, please let, do let me know in comments. And also please like, subscribe and share. Thumbs up if you like the video. And thank you so much for your amazing feedback on my last video. I am so happy that you like that technique. So this is something that really is really different. And I'm just throwing very different ideas your way. Again, thank you so much and take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.